just bear with me a second. All right. I think we're all set. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to Stamp with Shell. My name is Shelly Anderson, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator located in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Today, we are going to be doing a technique that's called markering, and we are going to be using the Nested Friends Bundle along with the Stylish Shapes dies. This bundle is found in the mini catalog and it is a phenomenal bundle. Love the birds. All right, we're gonna set those aside for right now. We're also going to be using a Daffodil Delight and a basic black Stampin' Write marker. Haven't used those markers for a while. I have some black uh, Baker Swine some memento black ink and one of the new basics folders all right for our card base today i have chosen basic black and i have a liner for the inside of our card in basic white all right and oh, i must explain my model this is a Sugar Bell icing bottle and it's very, very soft. It's easy to squeeze, super easy. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned it or not, but I've been having a real issue with my hands. I have a lot of arthritis and my hands to squeeze on something or to put pressure on something sometimes not all the time just sometimes it bothers me so somebody suggested that i use an icing bottle with an icing tip and just dump the tombow in there that was their solution so i'm giving it a try this is my second card with this the only thing that i notice is that Right now, I'm so used to squeezing harder on the Tombow bottle, the green glue bottle, that it comes out of this one much easier. There's hardly any pressure that I have to put on it, so there's quite a learning curve there. All right, so we've got the inside in our card, and we have some other bits and bobs here. I suppose I could put this on next. This is just a matte layer that I'm going to put on the front of the card. And I've embossed that with this Basics embossing folder. I just did that ahead of the video so I don't have to lug my big machine on camera. And we're just going to center that in the middle of our card like so. All right, now we are going to grab our piece of basic white that I've cut out with a stitch square. And it is about two and a quarter inches wide. So if I put my lines every quarter of an inch, we should be good. So what I'm going to do, these lines on the grid are a quarter of an inch apart. How convenient is that? So I'm going to take a piece of washi tape and I'm going to tape this square down to the grid. Oops, not like that. I'm not. There we go. I want to get it even as I can. 
want that stitch line right down the grid. There we go. So that way I can follow these big lines. So our first line I am going to do in basic black. And I don't know which end of this tip I want to use, to be honest. I'm going to try the small end. See what it looks like. We can always go bigger, we just can't go smaller. And I can tell you right now I'm not going to like this. No, because it's too... Um, it misses. Those, those little points, I, or little nibs, I find sometimes they're kind of missy. So we'll go with the wide one. And I'm just going to do every second one across, and then we'll do the yellow after. So I just skipped one. And there's another. Skip one. There's another. Skip. And another. So that is our black ones done. Now I am going to turn my ruler just in case. Let me grab a cloth here and clean off the edge of this ruler just in case. Oh yes, look at this. Good plan, Shelley. All right. Now we're going to take this ruler and do fill in the lines in between with the daffodil. Now I, I haven't tried this with stamp and blends because I think they would bleed a little bit. I'm not sure, but I think they would. I don't think you'd get as crisp a lines. I may be wrong, but I haven't tried it personally. If you guys have tried it, leave me a note in the comments. I would love to hear about it. Now, that's all I had planned on doing. There's a little bit of smudging there, but that's okay. That's all I had planned on doing was the vertical. But wouldn't it be cool if we did horizontal too? What do you think? And make it like a checkerboard background? I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing, only I'm going to do it um, across this way. So we're going to have a checkerboard. So seeing as I have the yellow marker here, we'll start with that one. Done with that, we'll bring the black one back in. There's no rhyme nor reason to what I'm doing. I'm just playing, to be honest. I have another card to show you that I've already done with this technique. And I just did um, the lines one way. So that's why I decided to try it. Um doing it both ways with this one just so I have something a little different and of course my colors are much different too all right there we go I'm going to clean off the edges of that ruler before I forget and pick that up and do it on something else <laughs> all right 
very good so there is our little focal image background and some of this stuff out of the way now we're going to bring in our stamping i've pre-stamped some birds and the branch and i am going to use light soft suede to hopefully quickly color this in and i love all the detail that the artist put into this branch like there's lots and lots of detail right in it so there's not even any need for shading which is good because some of these areas are pretty tiny I'm really hoping that this bottle works out because I'm always running out of glue on camera and this is an eight ounce bottle so I can fit four bottle four full bottles of Tombow in there um, so yeah I'm I, I'm gonna be happy about that if it works out I have another one here that uh, this is just a little bottle and I'm going to give this one a try as well. I've got this filled with Tombow. Um, and this is very, very easy to push as well. Um, but it has a bigger tip, which concerns me a little bit. So I'm trying the other one first. And we'll see what happens. Now I've got dark granny apple green. And we're just going to do those green leaves. And now we have these beautiful birds. Let's find Dark Daffodil Delight so that we can do their beaks and what color am I going to do these birds that's the next question um light crumb cake let's try that I, I only want two birds but I stamped three just to Give me a little playroom. Um, okay, that one's all right. Nothing phenomenal. Now let's go dark gray granite. Let's see what happens with this one. Oh, this may be too dark. We'll see when it dries. It's always deceiving because it always dries lighter. Right, like that. Um, let's go. Um, I think I'm going to do them both in the gray granite. I like the way it's drawing. I'm going to color all three and we will 
decide once we have them cut out and we lay them on our card what we're going to use and what we're not. Perhaps we can put one on the inside. All right, now I'm just going to have a little look at my layout here. This is how I'm thinking. And then this is going to go here and I want to put the birds on and the branch on there. I'm wondering if I can get away with a yellow. I'm going to try light daffodil on one of them. And then maybe I can use some of the um, base color and kind of blend it out a little bit. So this one was crumb cake. So let's see what I can do. I'm just adding little dashes just to take some of that super bright yellow away. You see what I'm doing there? It's just kind of muting it a little bit while letting some of the yellow show through. Um, I left it around his eye. I think I'm going to do that for all of them. Oh, this one's running out. Hopefully I have enough. All right. I think I'll start with the light gray granite, work my way up. Once it dries, we'll see if it needs to be, have the dark. This one has kind of faded, so I'm going to put some of this in here, mix it in. Let's see what happens. All right. While that is drying, I have my stamp and cut and emboss machine right beside me here. I'm not going to bring it up on camera because it's just too bloody heavy. And I am going to cut out our birds. Oops, I guess I need a little piece of tape on this one. It's moving around on me. Um, I'm just going to cut these out and I'll bring them right on camera after I get them cut out. There's our first bird. And there's a tree branch, and I got two more birds to do. Hopefully, I can do a better job cutting this one out because that one is kind of a little bit offset. Let's see if this one's better. It's kind of offset too. I guess that's what our snips are for. <laughs> One more bird and we are done our die cutting.
All right. Here we go. those in my magnet tray so I don't lose them. This little guy needs to have a little haircut because there's way too much white showing over here. I made a mess of that one. There we go. Those other two are fine. All right, now we get to play. Let's get some glue on this and get it in place. I'm just matching those borders on three sides as best I can. I'm going to do the exact same thing for this little guy with our markering technique on it. And we'll just center that guy up as well. There we go. Now these two, I'm just gonna put these together. So I have one unit. And my thought is that I'm going to put some of this behind this. So if I were to put a dimensional on there, perhaps it would help me. That's my plan anyway. I'm just going to loop some baker's twine around just to give it a little interest. Come on, don't give me a hard time. think that's what I want. And then we'll just center this in the white panel. And as you can tell, that greeting slipped and is not straight. Let's see if I can straighten that out. There we go. Beautiful. All right, now all we need to do is get this guy on. And do I want it this way? Perhaps. Gives me a nice good surface there. All right, I want some edges for dimensionals. to put on the back of that branch. So, I'm just going to cut all the way down this side. And, Just bend it as I need it. All right, now I'm going to have to cut it here. And I think I'm going to have to try to cut this in half, if you can believe that. I don't even know if I can do it. That's pretty skinny. Oh, maybe. 
Maybe, maybe. And across the top. We're doing well. Let's take that off because it's just in my way. There we go. We'll cut off the excess. And peel this off and we are all good to go. So right across the front like so. And now all we need to do is add our birds. So I'm going to put the two that are the same that are gray granite on the front. And we'll put the crumb cake guy on the inside. Just like that. I don't know what's so interesting over here that they're looking at, but. <laughs> now this guy, we're just going to put some adhesive right on him and put him in the bottom corner. Actually, let's do this side. There we are. And there we have it. That is our markering technique. And I made a plaid pattern there with the black and yellow. Now, as promised, I have um, another card to show you. And this one is using the... Uh, Starry Sky cardstock, and I used three colors of markers on this one, and um, just did stripes. And I colored my birds very colorful, and I used the coordinating um, metallic ribbon, same embossing folder though. And mine's just plain on the inside, but it's a stitched rectangle. So there are the two cards side by side that we've made. I didn't put any embellishment on this one. Oh my. We need to give that a little bling with what? Let's just put some basic rhinestones on there. Just a little bling. There we go. Just a little smattering of sparkle up in that top corner. So there we have it, my friends. That's our cards for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please um, like, share. It helps me out a lot if you do that. Um, share it to Facebook, share it to YouTube, share it wherever you want. Go nuts. All right, I am done for today. I'm here Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon Central Standard Time for short Lunch Break with Shell video tutorials. And I'm here Wednesday nights at 6.30 for Facebook Live. See you soon. Bye-bye.